rough morning? <laughs> We're here for you. Jeff and Jeremy in the morning. 93.3 KZOZ FM, San Luis Obispo rocks. I found this CD last night in my garage when I was uh, cleaning it out, getting ready to move some stuff to storage with my impending move. The Kings of Leon CD. What do you do with a CD nowadays? That's what I. That's what I did. <laughs> I, I referenced this the other day with Coyote in that episode when Coyote catches the Roadrunner. He just sits there and looks at him for a second and goes, "Well, what do I do now? My whole my whole lifelong quest has been accomplished. I, what do I do?" I looked at that CD and I was like, hmm. <laughs> do I put it in my car? No. Do I put it back into storage where it will toil away for another 12 years? No. What do I do with this CD? I eventually ended up putting it in my car. I went, I went, I went. Because you still have a CD player in your I car. I went old school and retro because there is a feature on the. 2011 Honda Odyssey, which is the worst feature in the world. It does not allow you to take the song and rip it from... It's so dumb, okay? What they did was they tried to... In 2011, there was still... Is that when they put the hard drives in the cars? Yeah, but they still they still thought that they had this, like, fail-safe of um, making it to where people could not... Um, just take songs and pirate songs and, and, and then transfer them to their hard drive and then they have them. You had to have the rights to the music. And the only way you were going to have the rights to the music was if you had it on CD. Well, there's ways you can pirate music, burn it onto a CD, right. and, and, then, and then record it in your set. But the, it does this thing, and I don't know how to explain it to you, except right, I got the Who's um, Ultimate Collection, right? It's two disc, Ultimate Collection, and I got it here from the radio station. So I was like, oh, I'll put that in my hard drive in my car because I like the who. And I put it in and it asks you a question. It says, do you want to record this CD? And I'm like, sure. I hit, I hit yes. I want to record the CD. And then this little record button comes up and it stays on. About halfway through the third track, it turns off and it has recorded the whole CD. Now, I thought you had to play the songs individually into the system, which would require like a long road trip, right. <laughs> especially for the ultimate collection of the Who. But apparently, you just rip it off. It it doesn't it doesn't like take the music and just import it immediately, but it like records the music as you go along at like a, a faster rate or something along those lines. It's the weirdest thing. It would be much easier to just let you put the music on the hard drive. Like well, it's a 2011. That was seven years. ago. I know, but like they were thought they th they were thinking they were tricking anybody. Like, don't you know hackers move at much faster rate? And and people and, and what car manufacturers have to realize is people are going to have these cars beyond the year that they buy them. Especially now, cars last a long time. I don't know if they're still putting hard drives in cars anymore. I think what they're doing is they're just putting interfaces in for like iPhones and like Droids, and right. you know you'll just play the music off your phone because that's they where get, you have it. They get financial uh, consideration. Uh, right. on, on, from, from Apple, from, from Google, from, from everyone. Yeah, uh, Amazon. They get financial consideration for putting their systems in their car, and they're like, "Yeah, oh, yeah, we'll put our, your system in your in, in your car." You guys want to go ahead and uh, get some information from the people buying our cars? Come to us. You know, and then they got the uh, the Wi Fi in the in the car. My truck has Wi Fi options on it, right? But you know what you have to do? You have to buy a plan through mm -hmm. OnStar, and then that's how you get your data. And it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's, it's like, is it expensive? Oh yeah, I mean yeah. For what I use it for, I would be using I'd be using so much data that it would be a, costing me a hundred dollars a month. We have a thing here at the radio station that we use. It's called uh, Jetpack. Jetpack. Thank you. Verizon offers it, and I, I don't know what it is, but it gives you internet wherever you're at. It yeah. takes a cell phone signal, it makes it Wi-Fi, and hotspot. it makes it Wi-Fi hotspot. That's actually pretty damn reliable. Yeah. And um, on long car trips with the kids, I've thought about, man, is that? I mean, but I'm talking about the infrastructure for a five radio station group for my kids Kindle. You know. <laughs> <laughs> like, Wait a minute! I I shake out that, that idea. I'm like, no, uh, uh, I'm not spending hundreds of dollars a month just so my my daughter can play her Kindle on a ten hour trip to grandma Actually, that, and grandpa. That's a good idea, though. You should uh, you should ask uh, 
You should ask somebody about that. I wonder how much that thing costs a month. We have like four of those things around, but we use them for when we go out to a live broadcast to use them for for that purpose, yeah. to have internet purposes. So uh, I, I can't imagine they spend that much money on those things. But, well, just because you know the spending habits of <laughs> this radio station? Yes. Of, this five, uh, what's going on five station conglomerate? Does it scare me? Not at this point. But I mean, I know that it's, you know, I understand the capabilities of what they're doing. And, uh, you know, it's like every sci-fi movie you've ever seen in the past, you know, decade to 20 years. And so... 50 years. Yeah, they'll be, it'll well, be running things There's a book written soon. about it. It's called 1984. And, you know, <laughs> just came along, just came along 30 years too late. Right. Yeah, it is. It is interesting to see how uh, the this society will be completely digital in probably well, a decade. Not even just digital, but connected. Right. That's the thing that scares there's me. There's a great convenience to that, but there's also a price to pay. Yeah, like I like you are staunchly against Venmo. I'm staunchly for Venmo because of its convenience, but. There's been even here. I had a buddy that got hacked his PayPal. That's kind of the same thing, right? Locally, yeah. I mean, similar to idea. And you brought and up something he, to his bank account got drained. He spent the other day all day on the phone with the banks. Yeah, and and it's you know, I mean, it's funny because you were telling that story yesterday. And Matt's response was like, um, "Yeah, but you just call your bank and tell them, hey, you know, uh, I didn't buy these things, and they usually take care of it for you." Yeah, but, but it wasn't that easy for him because he spent all day on the phone. I it, he noticed it at ten thirty in the morning, and at at four o'clock or three thirty, quarter to four, when I last saw him, he was still on hold with a bank on and off throughout the entire afternoon. I mean, what a pain in the ass. I don't know why it's different than a credit card because I've gotten a call from my bank before and said, hey, were you just down in Rosarita, Mexico? And I said, nope. So you didn't spend $472 at, a, at an Exo gas station? Nope. All right, well, we'll take care of it. It'll be fixed in 24 hours. I go, do I need to do anything else? Nope. So, I mean, for the credit card, for some reason, they seem like they've got that handled. But when you start adding like a third party, like the PayPal, or I don't know about Venmo, but you know, like a Venmo or PayPal, Venmo maybe it gets more complicated. Owned by PayPal, so it's the same thing, same concept. Yes. And one's credit versus one is actually you know money in his debit, his checking account. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't know, maybe that's another reason why. But man, it was just like man, it's just sucks. the connectivity of everything and the fact that you are giving, you are just handing over information by the use of your devices, whether it be Alexa, whether it be your smartphone, whether it be your Android or your iPhone, it doesn't matter. Your iPhone seems to be a little bit more protected. Um, You are just handing over information and in the wrong hands, that information can devastate you. So it's the price you pay for convenience, right? It's like you go to 7-Eleven and you need a loaf of bread but loaf of bread's like three fifty. When you can go down to Vons and get a loaf of bread for ninety nine cents, that's the same thing. You're paying the price for the convenience of having it right on your corner. And we've seen it with cell phones. I mean, before cell phones, there was this this great freedom you had that you could just say, "Oh, I wasn't home. Sorry, I missed yeah. your call." Now you and now everybody has a cell phone. Now Does people, anybody not have a cell oh, phone? And people are like, "Like I emailed you last night at eleven thirty. How come you haven't responded to me yet?" And it's like six twelve in the morning. I, I, I haven't even checked my inbox yet. Yeah, Give sorry. me a chance. Okay? I don't operate on your schedule. Give me a chance. And people operate at different levels. People are totally all in on being connected. Me, like, for example, I have certain times of the day in which I get caught up, and that's just the way it goes. It's all scary. Oh, it's all scary. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Tinfoil hat. Tinfoil hat. <laughs> hey, let's do dumbass of the day. Wah, 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 wah. I brought my car with me from Minnesota. That's right, 1989 Mazda 323 hatchback with a billion miles on it. That's right. My favorite thing to do with my hunk of junk car is uh, valet park. That's right. I love to valet park the hunk of junk car. Because there's nothing I like more than spending 10 minutes and $5 explaining how to drive my car to the man who is trying to work for a living. It's just, it goes something like, yeah, you have to start it in neutral. I'm sorry. The emergency brake doesn't, don't lock it. Don't lock it. Thank you. Now I have to climb through the hatch. And my car... People with really nice cars when they go to the valet are mean, and that's not okay. That's mean. So I like to play a little game with the valet guys. I like to pull up quick before they see the car, jump out, hand them the keys, and say very sternly, and hey, be careful. (laughs) And then I like to say, and I've written down the mileage. (laughs) 
so if it's much above 197.5. Enjoy right. Dumbass of the day. 93.3 KZOC. All right, uh, James, James Skip Fowler. He's an attorney. He was at an attorney's convention where he parked his Ferrari last July. Levi Miles. Oh, yeah. You know, you're, you're the attorney and you're going to the attorney convention. Oh, yeah. yeah. you got to be a big swinger there. He had you got to show up in the Ferrari. He had the uh, 2014 458 Italia Spider Ferrari, okay? He's like, yeah, I'm going to I gotta go to the... Uh, Cynthia, forward all my emails and calls. I'm taking the Ferrari down to Tampa. <laughs> big attorney convention. Uh, i floss a little. Levi is not an attorney. He's a 28-year-old who showed up at the Vinoy Renaissance Resort and Golf Club last July 27th. And he saw the Ferrari off in the distance. And he goes up to the valet stand and he says to the woman who's working the valet stand, he says, Hey, I need you to pull my car up. And they said, we need you to provide a ticket. He goes, that, that is my car over there. I don't have the ticket. I don't. I, I I left it in the car. Go get the car. So they bring the car up. He jumps in, <laughs> takes off, gets it, grabs a girl, takes joy, goes joyriding with a girl. He's trying to to impress the girl. He told the girl that it was his car. Of course. Um, he drove around for a couple hours, and it wasn't until he was like driving around. Recklessly, uh, that the cops saw him, and uh, actually, one of the things that was uh, the uh, JW talks about this all the time. So does so does um, Jeff Stolberg. The tail light was out in the 2014. Oh yeah, 458 Italia Spider. That'll get you every time. I would have got away with it. Was it for your damn tail light? <laughs> So James Fowler is suing uh, Marriott International because they own the Vinoy Renaissance Resort and Golf Club because Levi Miles joy rode his Ferrari. Yeah, and he'll probably win. Because he's a lawyer. But, you know, it's like, come on, you're going to a conference and you're taking your Ferrari. I mean, I'm sure the Ferrari isn't his everyday driver, right? I would think most Ferraris are, are cars that people keep in their garage. It's their weekend driver. This is the it's, deal. You know, whatever, when I want to have a good time. It's... Home, I'm sure he's in a Tampa, a Tampa area attorney. So it's hometown lawyer convention. And that's how you're going to impress. Because everybody else that's going to the lawyer convention that's coming from Akron or Lincoln, York, Nebraska or, or wherever they're coming Los from. Angeles or New York, they're flying into Tampa International and they are going to budget or Hertz or Uber Avis or Uber or they're taking an Uber <laughs> and they're and they're getting a car of their own. And I guarantee you they're not Ferraris. Okay. So this is hometown guys. Like, uh, yeah, big else, time, big time. Everybody else going to show up in a... Uh, you guys see uh, my 14 billboards on your way in? Yeah, <laughs> that's me. Everybody else going to show up on a Chevy Impala. I'm taking the 458 Italia Spider. Yeah, so you kind of deserve it, you son of a gun. <laughs> I mean, you give some young person that probably makes, I don't know, maybe 30 grand a year. Probably not, right? What's a valet make? You, did you say 12 bucks an hour earlier? Yeah. So Probably not. Yeah. No, probably not 30. Probably, I don't know if I want to put my ah, what tips, maybe? Uh, quarter of a million dollar car in some uh, yes, somebody's exactly. hands that makes about 20, 30 grand so a year. So it's kind of your fault a little bit, right? Yeah, of course it is. I don't care if you're going to the Budoi Renaissance Resort and Golf Club. There's going to be somebody out with a, uh, targeting your <laughs> your Ferrari. And you live and practice law in Tampa. You know the seedy individuals that live in it, Tampa Bay. You shouldn't be taking that Ferrari out of the garage at all. I mean, I'm just saying, this is the definition of douchebaggery. This is yep. the same thing. Just This guy has a lot more money than the jackass that spun out of the high school parking lot oh, yeah. and then wrecked his car trying to be cool. Remember, <laughs> remember there was a few uh, weeks ago that we did a uh, dumbass story about Another attorney who had art collection uh, yeah. wrecked by one night stand who yeah. he called an Uber for yeah. and she refused to leave. <laughs> Same kind of flash going on here. So congratulations. Not to Levi Miles who stole the uh, stole the Ferrari. Yeah, that was actually good work right there. You think about it. Yeah, that was actually that was very, a good sales job. very resourceful. In fact. Maybe you should go sell Ferraris. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> There's a dealership in the Tampa area. That's your guy, Levi Miles. Look him up on Facebook. James Skip Fowler.
Oh, you, attorney at law. Yeah. By the way, his middle he has a middle nickname as a lawyer. Come on. Hey, yeah, just call me Skip. <laughs> yeah. You don't have to call me by my proper I'm name. I'm attorney Flower. Was it Flower? I'm the everyday attorney that drives, drives the 458 yeah. Italian Spider. My just buddy. call me Skip. I'm my, your buddy. My friends call me Skip. Come on, Skippy. You're Jeff and Jeremy. Dumbass of the day. We were looking at a rental a few weeks back because um, we're, we're moving out of the place that, we, that we've that oh. rented for a long time um, because they're selling it. And uh, so I get in contact with this property management guy. And he's showing us like a, you know, like a two bedroom townhouse rental, um, on the lower end of the budget spectrum. And, uh, it's like $2,200 a month. Right. And it, I'm waiting for this guy to pull up, you know, and, and he, this guy pulls up and he's got slicked over hair and he's driving like a brand new Porsche. I don't even know what kind of Porsche cause I don't even deal in the realm of Porsche. This is a property management guy, property management guy. And I'm like, wow. Damn, property but management now, guys are doing all right. Granted, he worked for a real estate company as well. Okay. A lot of real estate companies will have a property management side of things that they all kind of, like, yeah. they, that even the agents will just, like, jump in and, and you know, they'll, they'll do that. And who knows what he had afterwards. But, I mean, here's me and my family of four <laughs> going to look at the... At the two thousand dollar a month townhouse, and this guy pulls Getting out up, of the Honda. This guy Honda pulls minivan pulls, pulls up out of the Porsche, and I'm like, immediately, my mind. I don't know how you work, but my mind goes there. It, 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 it immediately tells me, how much is this guy making from this transaction that's going to go down today, <laughs> and like, how much of it is mine? Ultimately, going to be mine. Like, is this normally like a Eighteen hundred dollar a month rental, and he's making four hundred dollars a month on it because, damn, he pulled up in a nice car. I remember hearing a story of a guy that owned a business here, and he had a flourishing business, and that business uh, was doing really, really well. So he decided to buy a nice big house out in Edna Valley and do the cool boss employee thing and invite tons of people over to his house for a huge party. And once all his employees went over to his house and saw how much money he was spending on a house, they started thinking, whoa, I want to raise. <laughs> yeah. Then, then that guy ended up selling that house because a lot of his employees left because they thought that they were not getting paid what they were worth. Yeah, that's kind of a catch-22, isn't it? There is... Modesty goes a long way, okay? Now, I have no idea what Jeff Stolberg makes, all right? But the guy drives... For a long time, he was driving an old Volvo, okay? <laughs> I mean, he drives an F-150 pickup. Yeah. I mean, he's... It's a very modest car. When it comes down to it, if there's an attorney who's driving, what was it, a 458 Italia Spider or a Ford F-150, which one are you going to pick yeah, at the you end want of the day? The, you want the blue-collar guy. I do. I want the guy that can relate to me. And maybe the guy that's not taking so much off the top that he can afford a $500,000 car. Yeah. You know? Like, people need to learn that... Modesty is where it's at. Now, this attorney I was looking into, he's 73 years of age, okay? So he's getting close to retirement. Maybe this is how he's going out, you know, with the with the Ferrari at the lawyer's convention and everything. Well, own the Ferrari, have the nice house, but don't invite your employees over. Don't, and don't be, you know, taking your car to conferences. But you what know, good is the Ferrari if you can't show it off, though, Jeremy? Well, you drive it on the weekends. I don't know. You drive it uh, when, I don't know, when you, when you don't have to give it to a valet. <laughs> You know what I mean? On a nice country road. Like, would you You've go, never been to Tampa, Jeremy. Would you go shopping and uh, park your car in a garage? Uh, in, in a car like that, uh, you know, worth a couple hundred thousand dollars? This is why dollars? I say I would never. Like, I don't even, like, my mind doesn't even operate in the in the realm of super expensive sports car. My mind operates in the realm of never buying a brand new car, okay? I mean, because you always hear those... those. Um, well, what would you buy if you had endless amounts of money? Let's say you hit the lotto tomorrow. I'd buy the car I have right now. You would just keep driving would, that minivan? I you wouldn't might, get a new one? I might upgrade to a 2014. <laughs> yeah. You would with get a, little a new bit, one. With a little bit lower mileage. <laughs> I, but I would drive the minivan. I just would. And that's why I have so much respect for uh, Warren Buffett. 
Because Warren Buffett, you know, he lives in a modest house. He still lives in, where is it, Omaha, Nebraska. He drives a regular everyday car. You've seen his house? Huh? Yeah, well, I, I have a friend who lived in um, in Omaha, and he said he would drive by his house every day on his way to work. And he just has, it's a it's a, like a four-bedroom house that's on, on, no a, way. on a lot. It's not like a palatial 10,000-square-foot no, no. He's got a mansion. gate in front of it. He's okay. got a gate in front of it, but it's like, like Google Warren Buffett's house. You'll be pleasantly surprised and like and but that kind of that kind of thinking probably leads to his success because you know how berkshire hathaway works it's a it's a very exclusive stock that nobody um that they'll never split that very few people have like you know the shares of it are like like you know two hundred and fifty thousand dollar per share of one share of stock of berkshire hathaway they never split the stock and it's an exclusive club, but people look at the way he spends his money, and they're like, "I'm comfortable with investing with that guy because he's not flashy. He's not, you know, flaunting it in front of everybody." Great meme on the internet. There's an old picture of Jeff Bezos when he was nerdy book salesman when Amazon. That's yeah. all they did. And that's right. That's how they started, wasn't it? it yeah. Was a sale. It was and, like, and, yeah, they went and, after Barnes and Noble. And, and Jeff Bezos today. And Jeff Bezos was a nerd. I mean, he looked like a guy yeah. that you plucked right off the shelf at Barnes yeah, & Noble. Yeah, I know. Now and he's said, all trendy. Said, hey, do you want to start an internet company? Now the guy, like, it looks like he works out probably eight hours a day. He And he looks kind of like a, like a, like a, you know, a buff, middle-aged, bald guy. You know, I mean, like, like almost like an action hero. He kind of looks like a... Uh, the guy that's going to give you knocks? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what's his name? The comedian. Actor. On on uh, the, 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 the America's Got Talent, Jimmy. No, uh, why can't I think of his Howie name? Howie Mandel. Howie Mandel. Yeah, Howie Mandel's in good shape. Yeah. Okay, because he, he kind of looks like Howie Mandel. That's what I thought when I and saw him. Like, oh, he looks of, like Howie Mandel. And there's this picture of him. No, on I can't the think internet. of his name. I mean, he's just yoked, right? Right. And this is current day Jeff Bezos. And a picture of him back in 1997, and he's all nerdy. You know, he's got the, he's got his like uh, book bag on his on his shoulder. He weighs probably. Uh, Two thirds of what he does now, the richest guy in the world. And and on the meme it says it says Jeff Bezos in 1997. Yeah, I sell books on the internet. Jeff Bezos in 2017. I sell whatever the f I want. <laughs> <laughs> What's the nicest car that you've ever driven? Uh, you know, I had a boss that had a Rolls Royce, but it was an older one. And uh, I was, you know, he owned a body shop. and Rolls Royce. He, he, boring. He, he walked around and like, you know when you go to a mechanic place? Did you, did you pull up next to people and say, pardon me, sir, do you have any gray poupon? Yeah, yeah. He wasn't wearing coveralls, but he'd wear like, you know, like if you're a doctor, you wear scrubs, right? But if you're a mechanic, you wear the blue pants and the lighter blue shirt, right? Whatever that's called. Uh, we'll call it mechanic scrubs. And so he just wore that crap around every day. I don't think the guy ever showered because his hair was always sticking up all over the place. And his car just reeked of Miller High Life. Oh. And so, so my it, job was to clean out all the beers and then spray down the of the floors, Rolls Royce of the of the yes of the floors. The I, Rolls Royce. I, I was the detail like guy. Miller High Life. Oh, all twenty fours. Everything he drove smelled like like cheap beer. And so I cleaned it all out. I put the air freshener in there. I'd wash the car, tire dress it, and then I'd put it back out front for him. And uh, you know, once he's like, uh, "Hey, can you run down and get me some uh, Miller High some Life?" Miller High Life. And I, <laughs> and I said. <laughs> I said, yeah. I was, you know, I was 21 years old, so I was like, you know, I could do it. I'm like, sure, but I says, I don't have a car. He says, oh, take the rolls. That's fine. That's the that's the Miller High Life truck. <laughs> and this thing was like a Sherman tank, man. This thing was probably uh, like somewhere in the 80s. That's what I'm saying. It's like and, boring because yeah, it's but, like, you know, you're no, yeah, but I was, you know, I just felt like an idiot. <laughs> and so, and I'm not a very big person. I remember the steering wheel was huge and I was kind of behind it. And so that was probably the nicest car. I mean, as far as like, you know, uh, status symbol that I've ever driven. Mm -hmm. uh, the nicest actual car I ever driven was a was a Corvette. It was a sports a, car. You a, mean a Callaway? It was like a hundred and I don't know twenty five thousand dollar Corvette, and I got to drive that a little bit, and that was fun. I mean, I, it scared me because we were going like uh, you got on it. I, we were going like seventy down uh, the highway, and I got on it, and uh, it broke loose the tires, and it started to break. While loose. you're going seventy, while I'm going seventy, I jumped on it, and the whole tires broke away from me, and the whole ass end started going sideways. I just let off the gas. Went okay, okay. Uh -huh. That's enough. I'm gonna go back. Wow. I'm not ready for this car yet. So that would probably be the nicest. Wow. Uh, five four three thirty six ninety three. Those are the eight hundred five beer text lines. Uh, we're asking you this question this morning. If you missed it, uh, dumbass of the day down in Tampa, Florida.
he decided to, he's an attorney. He wanted to take his uh, Ferrari to the attorney convention, uh, show all his attorney friends that uh, my practice is doing pretty good because uh, I drive a I drive a, a Ferrari. Um, and then the uh, YOLO uh, kid comes up to the valet stand. He says, yeah, that's my Ferrari over there. Jumps in it, takes off, and takes his girlfriend for a joyride for 12 hours. Um, we didn't make the kid the dumbass of the day. <laughs> we made the attorney the dumbass of the Who day. Who that kind of car to a convention to have some but that kid, kid valet parking? Now that kid, that kid has a YOLO story, you know? That's true. I mean, it's like, he's like, yeah, I was 28 once. I like to say kid, 28's old enough to be making better decisions than that, but it is Florida. Um, you got this kid that is now got this story. He's like, yeah, I've driven a Ferrari before. Stole it for like five hours. You know, like Chick Chloe took her around in it too. <laughs> Banged her in the back. <laughs> uh, well, the, you can't really do that in a Ferrari. What's the nicest <laughs> car you have ever driven? Tire guy, Jeff. He's a tire guy, so he's got access, right? Uh, Lamb. Yeah. He says it's a three-way tie. Nicest car he's ever driven. Uh, Lamborghini Aventador. Uh, that's the name of the Lamborghini. Yeah. Yes, and a Lamborghini uh, Hurricane. Yeah, or an Audi R8. I don't. I'd have to Google those. I don't know which is better, a Hurricane or a Aventador, Aventador, or whatever. Aventador. An Audi 8 R8. That's pretty much a a, a car that is feasible for most people. Is it? You is know it? what I mean? It's a sports car. It's probably it's not for me. You can probably start it around fifty grand or something like that. Where it's, a Lamborghini is like one hundred and fifty and up, or maybe even maybe two hundred thousand dollars. It is car. not feasible for me. The Audi R eight. But you could swing it if you wanted. No you know what I mean? Way. No, you won't. In but hell. you you could you could you would have to obviously. I understand. Unless that, that really thing seats eight. Budget. Unless that Audi R eight that eight stands for seats. <laughs> but I mean, at least an, an Audi R8 is is somewhat of a car that other people can drive. And I've always, that's another Audi uh, that I've always wanted to drive. Love Jaguar. Somebody wrote Jaguar in earlier. And uh, those those are uh, like the F-Type is really cool. And even uh, uh, the F-Pace, which is the, we were just looking at during the break, is kind of fun. But, you know, it's so funny when you start looking at uh, some of these cars, and you brought it up, that they all kind of start to look the same. And uh, Well, yeah, because one, one car design will start out and... and this is a good example of it. Okay, so Volkswagen and Porsche and Audi, they came out with the uh, design for the Touareg back in the mid two thousands, and um, which was the Volkswagen Touareg, the Porsche, Porsche Cayenne, and the, whatever the Audi number is. It's like the Q four. I have no idea. Um, Q six, Q eight, whatever. Um, but you know which one I'm talking about because it looks like the Cayenne and the Touareg. Then. Everybody started, they, they sold really well. So everybody started designing their SUVs to look like that. Have you, have you seen the Mazda SUV? The Mazda SUV yeah. is the same design. The Hyundai SUV is the same design. All right. they, they, say, they say, you know, uh, that, that uh, uh, it, it, what, what is it? What's the sincerest form of flattery? Uh, jealousy? Uh, no. Uh, um, copycats? Copycats, uh, But yeah, it's yeah. not copycats. We're, uh, with the word slipping me. Imitation? Uh, imitation? It, is it, not imitation, but... It, <laughs> Sorry, I'm in the middle of looking up this Audi R8 because the tire guy okay. just said, listen, this is not the car you think it is. I, I'm and, thinking, I, and I, I guess it, it, you, we can't afford it. It's a $100,000 car. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, what is the car I'm thinking of? The Audi, the little... Probably the A4. <laughs> I don't think it's, it's a, half the price. It's not an A4. It's in, maybe it's an A8. Maybe it's an A8. That's what it is. I don't know. I, yeah, no, that's not it either. Actually, actually, somebody else texted and they said the uh, the MSRP on the uh, on the R8 is one hundred and sixty five thousand, okay. and then they follow it up with yes, very affordable for everyday man. Okay, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah. well, I tried Jeremy, to... what a lot of you don't understand is Jeremy actually rakes. Dollars, ducats. Okay, this guy makes a ton of money, so one hundred and sixty-five thousand is very affordable for this everyday man <laughs> yeah. over here. What is the damn sports car that I'm thinking of that Audi makes that everybody drives? It's a little two-seater, and I thought that was the car he was talking about. And I think it's right here. It's the TT. The, it's the new Audi. Is it the TT? The two-seater. The TT. That's what I thought it was. I have no idea how I got an A out of any of that. I apologize. I'm thinking of the TT. That's the, the Audi. R8, completely different. The cars. Audi version of the Mazda Miata, right? What about you? What was the coolest car? Um, Did you ever say? I, You know what? I, I think it would surprise you. Well, I, I, I you, think it, no, it would totally surprise you. You've driven a lot of cars because you've yeah, cause valeted, valeted it for years. I mean, that's like Tire Guy Jeff. He uh, he texted in the, you know, the two Lamborghinis and the Audi R8. Um 
he has access because he's a tire guy, okay? I mean, like, he, you know, pulls the cars into the bay, and they come in, and cars need tires no matter what kind of car you're driving. Right. Just like when I was a valet, cars needed to be parked. I mean, you don't have a valet at, uh, you know, Denny's. I mean, you're working at a nice restaurant. People come in with money. Mm-hmm. Let me guess. Was it German or American? You would not. I would give you 100 guesses, and you would not Was be it able German, to American? It was an American car. It was an American car. And you would not, I mean, like, it, because only, and it was only the nicest car because it surprised and shocked the crap out of me. Like, it was like, it was, I was, was it like, a GM product? Well, and now your guesses are, are going way down, okay? <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to tell you what type of car because you just go through a Wikipedia. I'm guessing list. it was some sort of Cadillac, but I don't it know. Wasn't, it wasn't. It was, a, it was a Ford. It was a Ford. <laughs> a Ford Taurus? It was the Ford Taurus SHO. So what the SHO did? Stop. No, stop it so right now! Like, like the SHO gets parked. Have you ever driven a Porsche? It gets parked at our yeah, lots of them. And you you prefer the Ford Listen, SHO? The SHO gets pulled into our lot, right? And it's a Ford Taurus. And when I was working valet, thousands of people had Ford Tauruses, right? But nobody had the Ford Taurus SHO. And what they did with the SHO, basically, it was the five liter Mustang engine. No, I know. I remember that they put into the Ford Taurus. Yeah. So I get on it because I'm thinking it's Ford Taurus. I don't even b- bother to look at my surroundings because we had to park a lot of cars. We were in a rush. Those used to be the dumpiest cars. And I got on it. Yeah, and, I know. And it, like you said, the the tires broke loose on the Corvette on yeah. here. <laughs> the, I mean, that thing started spinning. Everyone was wet out. And I'm like, what am I driving here? I had to look around. <laughs> but when you got in it, it didn't feel like a Ford Taurus. I remember when those came out, they were huge. They were like, what happened to the little Ford no. Taurus? So this one was huge. No, this, the, it was- the SHO was the was the standard. I'm like talking nine, like circa 94, 95. So the old model of Ford Taurus that everybody had. The old plastic-y one? Yes, yes, yes. This, oh, the, God, the, you're the, so weird. The, and, and it was the same size. It looked the same. All they did was take so the... the, the, the the 2.8 liter engine You've out driven whatever fancy sports cars like Porsches and other yes. things but this car does it for you because it would surprised you because it flew under the radar it was a performance vehicle masked as an everyday man's sedan and i loved that about that car because you could achieve greatness in that car while looking like george costanza uh, 1985 Pontiac Fiero. God, I remember those things yeah, those when were, I was young, and those, I thought those were cool. Those were actually kind of cool cars. And then you realize they, they had an they issue. fall apart. Yeah, they had a. They had a, uh, I remember a girl, a car lot I worked at uh, in high school. It was an RV lot, and uh, the sales manager's daughter, who was hot, um, she, she drove it. She yeah, she went to a, a rival high school, and she drove it. And her job was to like I don't know work in the office on the weekends because she oh, was the sales manager. Those things, those things would come into the body shop at, after a wreck and with a cloud of smoke behind them. No, no, uh, <laughs> after a wreck, and they would just be it'd, like brittle, like the whole thing would just fall right. apart because the engine was in. the They center. were just like total it. Don't. There's no reason we'd have to rebuild this into. It's not worth it. Your insurance isn't going to cover. Well, that was the cool thing about that and the MR2 because they both came out at the same time right. and and they had the engines in the center of the vehicle. Not in the front of the vehicle, uh, which was awesome at the time. What was the car they drove on 90210, the Ian, whatever his name was? I don't know. I didn't watch that show. It was a red car. It was a sports car. The girl drove it. Jeremy, I did not watch that show. I think Honda made it. Did Honda make that car? You're not going to. You're not going to talk me through this one, okay? Let's grab the calls. Let's go to the phones. Hi, go ahead. Thanks for hanging on. Actually, it was just just one of those um, 65 Mustang um, cars ever, but... Yeah, wasn't it the re- the red one that I went I drove to Las Vegas? Oh, it was a, the red Mustang GT. It was a 2000. <laughs> you don't even know. Sixteen. You don't even know yeah. what the car was. I love that. I, I love- know. Well, my son, my son's right here because I just rented it. I know, like every single car. <laughs> yeah, every single car. <laughs> Look at you. I thought her son was going to be like twenty, thirty year old guy. He's like no, a little kid. He's nine. So when when you guys were arguing about the um. The TT, he already knew it before you guys. You guys <laughs> well, God, he, he needs. Already he, calling it out. Does he want a job? He can come here and work before school. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I, I, I can go. He's, a, he's our car <laughs> consultant. All right. And the and and the Lamborghini or the Huracan? It's called Huracan, not Hurricane. Oh, okay. I oh. thought I thought it was a typo because he left the e off the end, but that apparently was on a, on purpose. Huracan. What's your What's your son's name? Go ahead, say. Um, la, la, la. Uh, I, I started like all the time. Vladimir. Your name is Vladimir? Vladimir. Vladimir, what's the coolest car? What's, what, if you could have any car, what would you want? Um, 
It was really fun to drive. It goes pretty fast. I've driven a Mini Cooper, a Mini Cooper S. And you're nine, and you've driven a Mini Cooper? Yes. I they sat on my aunt's lap. Okay. <laughs> Around the block. But on, no, no, but, no, no, no. No, what would be your, your favorite car to drive, like, ever, if you could drive it yeah, right your, now? Your first car is coming up in seven years. First car. <laughs> okay. Lamborghini Chechnaya Roadster. Have you been saving money for this car? No, but I do have, like, uh, like two dollars. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm James. You're, All right, you're, you're, you're well on your way there. <laughs> All right, have a good day, guys. <laughs> you too. Thanks. Now mom knows what he wants. <laughs> Start saving, mom. Why do you think I preach minivan love in my family? Jeff and Jeremy in the morning.